Hello and welcome everyone, in this video we will see why did the filmmakers decide to change Boromir's fate in The Lord of the Rings. Thank you for clicking on this video, it is presented to you by Question Answer. I thank Brian Overland, Laurel Callahan, Jessica Volschleger and Dustin Nguyen for answering this question, we'll start with Brian Overland's first answer. Boromir dies at the same point in the story, in essentially the same way, after the same series of incidents, trying to take the ring from Frodo and then redeeming himself, that occurs in The Fellowship of the Ring by Tolkien. In fact, the portrayal of Boromir is on the whole faithful to his depiction in the book, the bottom line is. He was basically a good man who had an understandable, and common, human weakness. He desperately wanted power in order to try to do good with it, to save his people. The difference between movie Boromir and book Boromir is basically that this is one of a very few areas, maybe the one area, in which Peter Jackson's script actually improved on Tolkien's writing. In the movie version, there is a longer scene between Aragorn and the dying Boromir, and it is beautifully written. Boromir, expertly played by Sean Bean, emerges as particularly sympathetic in the film. Usually, Tolkien's writing is better than anything you can substitute for it, but this may be the exception. In contrast, I wish, The Rings of Power, has stuck more closely to what Tolkien wrote. We continue with Laurel Callahan's answer. I am going to say, no. Corrupted indicates that he had turned, to the dark side, to borrow a phrase from a different fandom. I believe a better term would be, being seduced. The ring seemed to be tantalizing him, almost flirting, whispered sweet nothings in his ear, offering him the power to save his people and his beloved city, Minas Tirith. He had not succumbed to the temptation fully, he was still mostly just entertaining the idea, falling into an infatuation almost with the possibilities. It is true that he acted on that vision momentarily and had he stayed near the ring he would have eventually fallen into corruption, but if you read about his reaction when he realized what he had done, it broke his heart, he was very much humbled as he confesses to Aragorn what he did, and finally that he was hoping for atonement as he desperately tries to save Merry and Pippin, that he was not corrupted. Yet. He had been seduced but had not truly sinned. We can continue with Jessica Volschleger's answer. The city of Osgiliath had been abandoned for hundreds of years. It had originally been the capital city of Gondor, and Minas Ithil, which became Minas Mogal, and Minas Anna, which became Minas Tirit, were military outposts meant to defend Osgiliath. The city was built on both sides of the Endung, and after the disastrous kin strife and great plague that struck Gondor during the Third Age, it was abandoned for Minas Tirith, which was far more protected and defensible. Before Boromir travelled to Rivendell and joined the Fellowship, he had been involved in various battles for the ruins of Osgiliath. Even though it was abandoned, it was important as an easy way to cross the Great River. Boromir had helped win the West Bank back for a time. However, it was then lost again when the Witch King personally led his troops. In this way, Sauron gained a stepping stone to Minas Tirith. The next answer is from Dustin Wynn. Because most of the prominent characters of the race of men in Middle-earth, even in the Third Age, are practically larger than life fantasy heroes. Most depictions of Boromir's last stand and redemption after temporarily succumbing to the ring's influence that drove Frodo away by defending Merry and Pippin is honestly one of the many balls to the walls moments in The Lord of the Rings. The man slaughters orcs, gets shot up by numerous arrows while being surrounded by more orcs, and Boromir straight up kept murdering as many as he can that by the time Aragorn found him, he was dying while surrounded by the pile of corpses that were his enemies. Again, none of these guys can really be considered average humans. Like damn, these guys may be mortal but they're absurdly tough in a fight. This is the end of the video, I hope you have more answers. If this answer helps you, please help us too by leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. It allows us to move forward on YouTube. The video is over, you can continue discussing this question in the comments, or find another question that interests you. See you next time.